Just shut up, just shut up, dude. Hey! What do you think you're doing? No! Shut up. Stop, there's an accident. Tell the children to look the other way. Play her. Play her. Play her. Play her. Anderson, what are you doing here? I'm Deputy Sack, Albany. Did LeBeau and Geller get in? Geller's in there. LeBeau's 20 minutes behind you. How many of our people are on site? Seven, including me. Why so few? That's all I had available. What about hostage rescue? <sighs> Team one's in Miami on a DA raid. Two's in Chicago on a bank robbery that went barricade this morning. So, what do I do for muscle? Well, you gotta wrap the locals out there. I don't trust locals. As I recall, Potter, you don't trust anybody. Uh, sir? The director's going to be in the AG's office at 3 o'clock. He wants you to call him then. Well, thanks, Toby. Nice job setting this up. Well, thank you, sir, but I just got here. This is all state stuff. It belongs to Sergeant Roger Elb over here. Very good, Sergeant. Thank you, Mr. Potter. We're capable of receiving any digitized or microwave communications. We've got the high-speed data links to the FBI mainframe, and Toby explained to me how you like to monitor the press, so I'm setting that up now. Very good. Uh, you understand we have deaf hostages? They are from a local school. We'll need an interpreter, someone from the school. We're working on it. Uh, Sergeant, do you have an extra flak vest and a bullhorn? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, John, about yeah. Mrs. Potter, I... Uh, thanks, Toby. I got your very nice note. Sorry I didn't write back. Don't mention it. Here you go, sir.
Who's in charge? Uh, Mr. Henderson with the FBI. I'm John Potter from the FBI. Well, I guess that'd make you in charge then. I'm Lenny Bud. I gotta tell you, sir, my men were pretty excited when they heard you were coming. Are you in charge of the state troopers here, Cap? Uh, yes, sir, I am. But uh, why don't you just call me uh, Lenny? Okay, Lenny, what's the situation? Well, uh, you see those two boarded up windows? Well, there's been some kind of movement, I don't know, glints or maybe a gun barrel or a scope. And uh, then they, they, they seem we'll to be... We'll get to that. How many people do you have here? I got 37 troopers and I got six police from the town of Beaumont, their whole force. Where are they deployed? Behind those trees is the river. Now, I, I got seven in the trees over there. I got another ten in this grove to the left. I got eight covering the field out back and uh, six that you see here. Who's in charge of the local police? Uh, that'd be Gene Stillwell. He's the chief of the Beaumont Police Force. Do you want to meet him? No, in a minute. Leave the people in the trees where they are. These troopers here, pull them back. Everywhere in front of this point, just consider the kill zone. From now on, anyone out there needs to be in good cover with full body armor. Second, those news vans out back, move them. At least a mile away. Mr. Henderson said they'd be okay there. Well, did he? Uh, they won't like being moved, sir. Fuck them. They got long lenses, let them use them. We've never done anything like this before, sir. We'll get sued. Fine, they can sue. Wait here. figured it out. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Now, the cattle, they're out in the stockyard, right? They channel them through here, one by one, and then, bam, bullet in the head. That's what they do. Did you shoot them, right? No kidding. Yeah. And they get hoisted up onto these hooks. They get spun around here, through here, to where the guys are here, and then what? What's going on? What? Get up! Get up! Get up! Get up! Get up! Yeah. What's up? Uh, I don't know. Kind of exciting, huh? Exciting? I'm Sonny. Hey! I don't wanna fuck you, so just leave him alone. Oh, shit, Handy, I was just talking to him. I don't want you fucking them either, so you just keep it tucked in, boy. You men in the building? This is John Potter. I'm with the Federal Bureau of Investigation. I'd like to talk to you men in there. <laughs> well, well, up. Mr. John we Potter. About ten minutes. We are not. Yes, we're famous, boys. Boy, who the hell's that? Shit. He's John Potter. He's with the FBI, and they're not going to attack. But they're sending us a phone. Now I thought you was deaf, lady. She is, but she reads lips. Her name is Melanie, and she's a teacher. I'm just a bus driver, but I'm going to graduate school. I'm really fall. happy for you, but would you mind shutting your fucking mouth? Excuse me? What was that little motion she made? What, what was it? What did that one there say to me? She said, uh, please don't hurt the children. Oh, yeah. Tell me Ow. what she said. What she want to say, lady? She said you were an asshole. You know, that's what I thought you said. <laughs> You're right. And all these roads are sealed, right? Yes, sir. And I want the river sealed to both directions. That's the Niagara River, sir. I know. I want it closed. Uh, well, see, down river closer to Lake Ontario, we got the Coast Guard on our side and the Canadian Coast Guard on their side, and they've both been alerted. But up here, we got a lot of rapids. Can't use regular boats there. You have to use those uh, Zodiac boats. And uh, neither the Coast Guard nor the police have any. Yeah, fine, fine. Borrow some men from the Coast Guard, rent some of those boats, buy them if you have to, but block the river. Yes, sir. We're ready for you, John. All right, let's take this inside. You okay, John? Yeah, I'm fine, Henry. Just fine. 
Potter himself, seen here in file footage, was wounded by flying debris and was hospitalized for 16 weeks, during which time his wife of 26 years died of an unrelated illness. Watch those hearings. After weeks of congressional investigation, Potter was exonerated of wrongdoing in the massive explosion. Indeed, some observers credit the FBI with avoiding a much more serious disaster had the bomb gone off in the original target. Still, critics of the FBI voiced protest over Potter's return to his high-level post, and Houston has been coupled with Waco in the minds of many. Except for his congressional testimony, wonder. Potter has <coughs> never made any public comment oh, on the uh, events in me, Houston Mr. that Potter. day. And uh, in case anybody's interested, that's still true. I have nothing to say about Houston. Okay, let's all get up to speed. We've established a threat management team here, myself, my intelligence officer, Henry LeBeau, my communications officer, Toby Geller, and Captain Bud, who'll serve as my deputy. I'll also be a containment officer who I haven't picked yet. All right. At 1.30 this morning, these three escaped from the Lewisburg Maximum Security Federal Penitentiary in Central Pennsylvania. Theodore Jeremiah Handy, Shepard Wilcox, Ray Sonny Bonner. Handy's serving a life sentence for robbery, arson, and murder. Seven months ago, he, Wilcox, Handy's girlfriend, and another perp, robbed the President's Federal Savings Bank in Pittsburgh, made off with $2,200,000. And as I recall, they never found the loot. They apprehended Handy and Wilcox in Canada three weeks later. The girlfriend got away, and the other perp was killed in a firefight. Handy's girlfriend, Pris Gunder, was never apprehended. We don't even have a picture. And what about him? Uh, Bonner and Handy were cellmates. He was in Lewisburg for interstate flight. Suspected serial rapist. Now, about that containment officer, have any of you had HR experience? You were going to say something, Chief? Uh, no, no. Well, um, we did have a situation on a farm. A fella killed his wife and was threatening to do the same with his two boys. What'd you do, Chief? <laughs> I didn't really know what to do. I mean, we didn't have any of this stuff. I just, uh... I talked to him. Spent about 20 hours on the phone. And you stayed with it full time? Yes, sir. How did it end? He came out, he gave himself up. And the boys? Uh, they were okay, apart from seeing their mother that way. Well, good work, Chief. You're my containment officer, if that's all right with you. Yes, sir. Anything I can do to help? Can I talk to you outside for a second? hell's going on that's my job and you goddamn well know it you don't have the sort of temperament i need for this containment henderson and that upstate hick does with all due respect sir you've been gone a long time in the meantime there's been a lot of training based on mistakes made at waco ruby ridge and houston i wrote those manuals and i was there in houston and that was your call all the way you're relieved of duty at this barricade agent order your team to report to chief stillwell and evacuate the site That big ref of yours might have skated you past a bunch of congressmen, but inside we know it's running out of wind. My reputation is irrelevant, Henderson. It's my authority that counts. Let's go over the rules of the engagement. There will be no rescue attempts whatsoever. We'll keep the takers within a hundred yard perimeter of the building. They will not cross that boundary. If any of them attempt to do so, your troops are cleared to fire. Shoot to wound unless there is a direct present threat to a hostage. Got that? Mm -hmm. Where's the throw phone? It's ready. Let's go to work. I was wondering, um, I mean, you, you hardly said two words about them kids in there. What's your point? I mean, shouldn't you have reminded everybody that our number one priority is getting them out alive? That's not our number one priority at all. Our number one priority is to end this situation with a minimum loss of life. I'm not sure I fully understand that. This way, he can only kill the nine hostages. Jesus. Maybe we can save those kids in there and maybe we can't. But we can sure as hell keep them from killing anybody else. The only way they're coming out of that building is in handcuffs or body bags. Clear enough for you? We got gas, but it ain't gonna work. I don't think it's run since 1950. Yeah, there's... How much gas we got in that canister there? It's nearly full. Hey, Ted, you plan on doing some plumbing in here? What the hell you think you're doing? Put that back in the duffel bag right now. What the hell's all this shit for? Well, it's none of your damn business, is it? 
Now get back to that fucking window where I put you and watch for them goons. This trooper's gonna make the run with that phone. What's your name, officer? Stephen Cardi, but I go by Stevie mostly, sir. How old are you, son? I'm 22, sir. You're the high school quarterback, joined the state troopers for excitement? How do you know that? Oh, yeah, well, you have that look. <sighs> Enjoying it so far? Yes, sir, I am. I'm sorry, sir. I mean, it's a terrible situation. I'm happy to help as much I as I can. I know what you mean. Well, I don't want any heroics today. You see that pen out there? I want you to move up there, and you pitch this as far as you can towards the front door of that slaughterhouse. All right, but what if I hit the building with... It's a special phone, and the bag is padded. Besides, if you hit the building from there, you ought to give up law enforcement and try out for the jets. Yes, sir, okay. This is Agent Potter again. One of my men is going to throw this phone as close as he can. This is not a trick. It is simply a cellular phone. Will you let our man approach? Hey, go. Are you sure that means yes? They would have said no with a bullet. Go on, keep low. Yes, sir. Sir, maybe he wants to get closer. That's far enough, Stevie. Throw it from there. Mark down. First contact with the hostage. Hunter, what's the communication? I don't know. Where's the interpreter? Christ. They're on the way. Set up a video camera with a telephoto lens and keep it focused on that upstairs window. Right. Yeah. You get over handy? <laughs> yeah. This is John Potter, FBI. I'd yeah. like to talk to you, Ted. Uh, can I call you Ted? Well, you got us surrounded, and I'm sure you got a lot of goons up there in the trees with guns. You can pretty much call them whatever you want to. Ted, this is a real tense situation. No, I'm not tense. I mean, I'm not tense at all. In fact, I'm really relaxed. Because, well, I'm getting ready to shoot myself on these little kids. Uh, Ted, I don't think you want to kill anybody. You go by Jack. John, actually. Okay, Jack. Now, what makes you think and I'm not going to shoot myself on these little kids. Because if you do that, I have to conclude that you plan to kill all of them. That's when we come in and take you out. Bullshit. That's bullshit. There's no way you're going to take a chance at coming in here and shoot one of these little kids. I'm asking you not to kill anyone, Ted. Can I have your word on that? Well, I don't know, Jack. I mean, should I or shouldn't I? You know, like, should I or shouldn't I? You know, that happens sometimes. You just can't make up your fucking mind. Mr. Potter, I'm Constance Stanley from Lauren Clerk's school. Oh, uh, we've been anxious for you to get here. How are they? Well, they're all still alive, as far as we know. Uh, you brought the profile? Yes. Here, please sit down. The young teacher? Melanie. Yeah. Melanie Cheryl. Well, uh, she signed something to me f from the window. Uh, I'm 
sorry, it's not funny. It's just that you're making the sign for drink. Could it have been this? That's it. That's the sign for help. Oh, that makes sense. She wants help. Right. But if you're doing it correctly, then she wasn't saying you help. She was saying help you. Help me? Yes. Well, I mean, I, I can't be sure. Sure, I understand her wanting to help me. I can understand her wanting help. I can even understand her wanting a drink. When this is over. I'll buy her a double martini. How you doing? Oh, How's God, what are you doing now? I sure hope nobody smokes. Oh. I chew, but I gave up smoking years ago. Yeah. Jack, yeah, how you doing? Listen, I want to introduce you to Donna. She's the bus driver. Yeah, here, say hi, and then tell him exactly what I'm doing. Go. He's sprinkling gasoline all over the room. How are the children? They're fine, except for Beverly. She has asthma, and these fumes aren't going to Let's help Let's go. Much. Down the stairs, honey. Oh. Down the stairs. Tell him exactly what I'm doing now. Don't miss me. He's sprinkling gasoline all, all the way, the way down, down the stairs. stairs. Now, keep going, honey. Turn to your right. All the way down to the bottom. We're going. Stop, stop down. down there. That's good We're there. on the second floor. It's a ship! <laughs> oh, baby! What's that there? It's a lantern. Well, tell, tell him. He's pointing to a lantern. Right, now what would happen if that lantern fell over? The whole third floor would go up in flames. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Jack, did you hear that? You get the picture? We get the picture. Good. H hang on a sec, Jack. I'll be with you in a second here. This here's gonna be your spot. It's gonna be your post, okay? I want you right there on the steps in case any of those little canary birds come down here. Toss that lantern over. Someone tries to shoot it, come in the windows. Toss the lantern over, okay? Come on, man. That means I'm stuck here with them up there. I'm here alone, and you guys are downstairs. <laughs> Got a problem with that? No. <laughs> yeah. Go. Oh. Go. Wow. Jack, still there? Yeah. Listen. This here, uh, something neat. I'm gonna let the bus driver go. Oh, no, 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 wait, let me, let one of the children go, Oh, please. no, no, this is your lucky day, darling. Great, Ted, I appreciate that. Well, I just wanna let you know I'm not all bad. Check you later. How are you gonna talk to them? Melanie and me is gonna get along just fine, darling. there and meet her, Stevie. Yes, sir. Why would he tell us about the gasoline and then send her out? John? Don't try it, John! Get down! Get down! Run. Oh. No, stay down! Stay down! Get on the couch! Oh. 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 Ah. Bell Link! Potter. Jack. There's one thing you gotta understand about me right now. See, I don't care about that bus driver. I don't care about the teacher, and I don't care about these little boys and girls. They're all just like, well, little little birds I used to shoot back home off my front porch. Now, you can go pick her up. I'm not gonna shoot you. You just better give me what I want. And what do you want? Get back to you on that. some of our people closer. No, we do nothing. Nothing. It's his move.
Down like. Yeah. Yeah, Jack, listen, I've had a chance to think it over, did you? Yes, I did, but we have to get one thing straight. I'm the only man in this universe that can get you out of there alive. There's nobody else. I'm the one to reckon with, Ted. Well, that may be, but in the meantime, you know, we're starving. I mean, my body chef, he's starting to disappear before my very eyes. You should see him. You know what we never get in prison? Pizza. All right, chef? Where's the nearest pizza place? Well, this one over in Beaumont. 10, 15 minutes. It'll take about an hour, Ted. What else? Helicopter. Real big one. I'll work on it. What else? Uh, let me see. I need a hundred rounds of 12 gauge double lot. I guess you know I can't do that. Even if I was to give you a girl, Jack? Sorry. Weapons and ammo are deal breakers. Yeah, I hear you. You know, I hear you, Jack, but... If we was to do some horse trading, I mean, which one would you want? Would you want anyone in particular? How about the teacher? I mean, she is so fucking sexy, isn't she? She looks good. She smells good. I mean, hell, if I wasn't so devoted to Priscilla, I mean, I'd take a stab at her myself. Yeah, one of the girls has asthma. Yeah, no shit. I mean, for deaf kids, she sure makes a hell of a lot of racket, I'll tell you that. That means she's coming out, Ted? No, don't, Jack. What it means is I'm gonna shoot her in exactly two minutes. If I don't get that ammo, start timing. Shit! Get up! Sit down, lady! Sit down! Sit down! Get on your ass! Get your ass down! Oh, Jesus. Is that the window? Call it out, Toby. One minute, 30 seconds. Do something. Tell him you'll give him the shells. No. He's gonna shoot her. I don't think he will. Sorry! Yeah? Get up here now! Coming! What? Get this one thing down the post and tie her up. Take her down right now. Hurry up. Come on. One minute. Send him some blanks. Maybe some ammo that'll jam the guns? No. Okay, that's it. I'm going out there. Hold it, Lenny. You're not going anywhere. He's gonna kill her in cold blood. He's not. 30 seconds. How the hell do you know that? Twenty seconds. Fifteen seconds. Ten seconds. Nine. Eight. Three. Two. Zero. That's two minutes. Two minutes, five seconds. Tell me. Yeah. Hey, Jack, how's it hanging? Fair to Midland, how about you? Oh, I'm doing just fine, thanks for asking. Listen, here's the deal. I'm gonna shoot me one of these kids every hour until the chopper gets here. That's one an hour every hour starting at 4 p.m., all right? And I'm also gonna need me 100 rounds of ammo for the Glocks as well. Well, I guess you're not hearing me, Ted. No ammo, period. Now, the food will be there in 40 minutes. When you get it, I get the girl. You owe me this one. You shot one. This one's mine. You really want them, Jack? I really want them all, Ted. <laughs> You're a pistol. That's what you are, Jack. You just one big pistol. All right, listen, I'm gonna let you have this little yellow hacker. For the food. And for that chopper at 4 p.m. That's good, Mr. Potter. That's real good. Now, we can get you hello in 30 minutes. No, we don't need one, Lenny. We're not letting him go mobile. He's gonna kill them all. So he says. And you're willing to take that risk? That's my job, Lenny. That's why I'm here. To talk him out of it. Is the governor trying to get Potter fired? Do you have an no, official no, statement to make? No, the governor and the attorney general and I are doing the best we can. We're trying very hard. We are being held a mile.
state police HRT is here, along with the brass. Did you request them? No, sir, I did not. I would have told you if I did. Agent Potter? I'm Roland Marks, Assistant Attorney General for the State of New York. And this is State Police Major Tremaine. I brought our hostage rescue team with me, Mr. Potter. They would have been here hours ago. But if you can believe it, we never received any kind of notification or request for assistance. The governor thought that I should get down here and offer our assistance, and make sure there are no more communication glitches like that one. Well, thank you, but that was no glitch. We have the situation fully under control. But the FBI HRT is in Miami. And I know for a fact they can't leave there before tonight at the earliest. That's true. He shot a hostage. Now, if he shoots one, he'll shoot the others. That absolutely calls for an immediate tactical response. It's standard operating procedure. That's not my judgment in this case. I noticed that you're uh, monitoring the press. Yes. Do you realize that there's a great deal of public interest and sympathy for the deaf children? That there is. Yet you've ignored every request for a press briefing. Yes. We're very busy here. In fact, if that's all, we're still busy. Yes, sir. I'll have you briefed as soon as we know more. What? Are you telling us to leave? As you can see, sir, this is a very small space for us all to work in. Can I see you outside? Certainly. Are you aware that everything in that shack and most of the people here are working for the state of New York? And we appreciate the assistance, but this is still a federal operation. You're not planning an assault, are you? No. Have you offered to exchange yourself or other professional personnel for those children? Have you asked for volunteers? No. We understand they've offered to trade the hostages for a helicopter. They're not getting one. Well, why not? You could track the thing on radar with a homing device, they wouldn't get away. It's too risky. There's a known quantity of casualties right now. You just came off a suspension, didn't you? No, I took leave for personal reasons. Well, everyone has the greatest sympathy about Mrs. Potter, including, clearly, the congressman who investigated... Look, I don't know you, so don't go mentioning sympathy for my wife. Now, you're free to complain about me to the governor or to Washington. You be my guest. Excuse me. You got it? Light him up. Lower your face shield and say something. Uh, what should I say? That's fine. Okay, get him dressed. Get as close to the doorway as you can. I want to see what's inside, or what kind of weapons they have, radios, portable TVs, whatever. Yes, sir, no problem. You stand in the doorway. But do not, under any circumstances, go inside. All right, but what if you won't release her unless I do? You just... Leave the food and walk away. If it's between you and the hostage, you save yourself first. Well, sir, if I have a That's chance... an order, trooper. Okay, send him out. I'll tell him you're coming. Hey, Sonny! Yeah? Sonny, bring down that teacher and that little kid who uh, makes all them hacking noises. Bring them down right now. Just a sec. Hey, Jack, I'm sure you got a wire on that boy, right? What if I do? I want you to tell him to stop right now. Why? Well, because I don't want him to get here and think he can snoop around. I know how you fuckers work. I've been barricaded before, man. I'm a pro. Stevie, hold it right there. Bring him here. Okay, we got some food coming. Some outside. You are gonna go outside and get the food. You're gonna go home. Okay, so that's the deal. Go get food. I'm just gonna have to shoot her. Go, go. Come on, we're hungry. Just move it, move it. Come on, all the way. You come back. 
I'll be waiting for you. Get him back. Mm. Mm. Up, Link. Hey, Ted, I'm coming out there. <laughs> that, that kid forgot two large pepperonis. Jack, I want you to stop right where you are, okay? And I want you to tell that cop boy of yours to go back to you, because I don't want you getting closer to her than you already are. Stevie, come here. Melanie, I'm John Potter. I'm with the FBI. Can you understand me? Good. I want you to pretend that you're looking through the pizza boxes, but keep your eyes on me. Move over there closer and go slow. Yes. Don't block her line of vision to me. Uh, Melanie. But we can see you signing through the upstairs window. We're trying to get you out, but we need your help, okay? I want to know how the children are, and I want to know about the three men. Shut up, Jack! Yeah, okay. A little faster, Stevie. Good. And I want you to take the pizza and go back. I'm sorry I have to send you back. You be careful. Be careful. Yes. Ted, you got your pizza. Send out Beverly. You sure that's when you want, Jack? You sure you don't want Melanie instead? I mean, I, I can sort of see you looking at her out there. And she does have a set on her, doesn't she, huh? Send the girl out, Ted. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Go get her, Steve. Go get her. Chief Stillwell saw someone at the south end of the field. Did he fire? No, nope, shot came from the building. Sir, yes. look! Oh, shit! Tell everybody, no return fire. Yes, sir. I'm coming up. Stevie, come with me. Yes, sir. Theodore Handy! I'm Roland Mark, Assistant Attorney General for the state of New York. I want you to let the kids go and take me in their place. Well, we don't want you. Handy, I'm alone and unarmed. He's stepping lively. If you get any closer, I'm going to have to see you. <laughs> For the love of God, Handy, let those children go, huh? Marks. This is Potter. Get undercover immediately or you will be arrested. I'm trying to save them! No, you are endangering them. I want you to give up the kids, Handy, and take me in their place. Do you hear me? I said I don't want you! <laughs> I swear, that one went right by his ear. There's no reason to shoot me, I'm unarmed! <laughs> Kissing the worms, man. Hey! Hey! Hey, Sonny! Yeah? Get your ass down here right now! What you doing, girl? You snooping? You snooping around here? 
What? Get your ass down here and get this lady upstairs. Get her now. We have to get him out of there. Stay low, son. I'm trying to help you, you understand that? Get down on the ground, sir. You're interfering with the federal operation. Trooper, what the hell are you talking about? You're working for me! And don't you forget it. Handy? If you let the kids come out, I'm prepared to negotiate in good faith! I'm gonna have to take you in, sir. Yeah, I'd like to see you try. Well, sir, my orders are to shoot you in the leg and drag you back. <laughs> Let's go! <laughs> Andy, you son of a bitch! I'll see you rot in hell! Crazy old fuck. Say. Never exchange hostages, Marks. The whole point of negotiations is to devalue them. If he'd gotten you, it'd have made my job impossible. I don't see why. A hostage like you would have boosted his sense of power and courage a hundred times. He'd up his demands and stick to them. I don't care about that. What I care about is those hostages. Oh, really? It had nothing to do with those cameras out there? Are you implying that I'd risk my life for some kind of publicity? Unlike you, I happen to care about those women and children. Unlike you, I'm willing to risk my life for them. I'm not the one who's concerned with rebuilding a shattered reputation. John? Yeah, what's up? There's a detective second on the Pittsburgh PD, a Sharon Foster. She negotiated Handy's surrender in a holdup five years ago. He gave up to her? He did, yes. Pierce, she's pretty good. Then get her up here. Well, I thought you might say that. So I connected her through to the five o'clock puddle jumper from Buffalo. And the only reason you needed to tell me that now was to give me time to regain my temper. You know me so well. Thanks. Let's get something straight, Marks, and you too, Major. If either of you interfere with this barricade again, I will arrest you, and I'll see the U.S. Attorney make sure you do time. Then you should consider your own actions, because you could be facing state charges for reckless endangerment. I'll try to live with that. Potter's blood. You never make that stick. Yeah? You want to take the chance? So we just stand here and watch those children be murdered? Not lift a finger? Is that it? No. What we do is hope to God that Potter knows what he's doing. Excuse me. How is she? They had to give her a shot, but she should be all right. Oh, when do you think we might be able to question her? She's at the window. The children are okay. They're scared, but they're all right. They took Susan downstairs and tied her up with the young one right below us. The rapist. The two others are on the Supposedly first Supposedly likes very young children. The Susan might be too old for it. The young one. They have a gun, two shotguns, and tools. New ones, a hammer, and a big monkey wrench. I think I've found a way to escape. There's a broken down staircase that they're not guarding. I know you can't answer me or tell me what to do, but I think you would want me to do it. I don't want you to do it. And so I will try. You like some pizza? Huh? No? Why? You must be hungry. Have some. Look. Good pizza. I haven't had pizza in about eight and a half months.
There you go. There you are. Good, huh? Yeah, hello, Ted. You know, Jack, it's damn near 4 p.m. and I haven't heard nor seen no helicopter yet. Oh, you gotta give us some time. We're having trouble with the bulldozer. What? Bull bulldozer? Well, who, 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 who the fuck asked for a bulldozer? Well, come on, Ted. We're both looking out at the same field. Where's a helicopter supposed to land? All that old junk, those old fence posts, we gotta clear an area for 100 feet around. I know you want the helicopter close to the building. You damn right I do. You see? Well, what about a, what about a pontoon chopper? A pontoon chopper? I never thought about that. Well, well you damn well should have thought about the goddamn river out back here behind the building. Well, yes, but that's the Niagara River. Yeah, I know it's the Niagara River, Jack. Well, good for you. Because I had no idea until I got here. They tell me the water's very fast. The current it just stands to reason we're not that far down river from Niagara Falls. You might want to land a helicopter, but if you swept down river right away, you see, that's why we need the bulldozer. Jack, tell me something, Jack. In Houston with them fellas, what'd they ask for? They asked for a helicopter bulldozer. They wanted a lot of things, Ted. Yeah, no, I mean, we saw it on C-SPAN. I mean, all us fellas in Lewisburg in the prison there. I mean, we was watching the hearings and... Well, fuck, you could hear a goddamn mouse fart when you was on TV. <laughs> Did you know that? No, I didn't. Oh, yeah? Now, you were on the stand for, what, three days? Three days. See, I knew that. But you know the thing that bothered me, Jack, was they never asked you if you thought that you fucked up. It seemed like a simple question to me, so I'm asking you, did you fuck up? The investigation concluded that no, I... No, I don't give a shit about the investigation, Jack. That's not what I'm getting at. What I'm getting at is... When that building exploded, did, did you feel bad? Yes. Did it bother you? You lost those people, I mean, those kids in the store, cops, and your FBI brothers, and that, that, that poor fucking retired janitor. Answer the question, Jack. Yes, it bothered me. <laughs> you see, you're out there, Jack. We ought to change jobs, man, because that wouldn't bother me if I could all. The only thing that bothers me is when I don't keep them promises. And that doesn't seem to bother you at all, does it? Ted, this is a practical situation here. No, this situation. If that fucking bulldozer's not here within a half hour, I promise I'll give you my fucking word that I'm gonna kill that little, what's your name, that, that, that Emily with the little red hair. Half an hour? That's not promise. Half an hour. That's promise. Can we get a bulldozer here in half an hour?
Oh, 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 fuck. Oh, you gotta go easy. Or do you like it rough? Do you like it rough? Yeah, you can pinch it. You can pinch it. Yeah. Be rough for me, yeah. I like that. Hey, Sonny! Yeah? Everything okay up there? Everything's fine, Ted! She just knocked out. It's that bitch's fault there. She's, she tried to jump me. Bring her here. Hey, you squirrely <laughs> one. Here's what you're gonna do. You are gonna stay the fuck upstairs and you're gonna watch these kids. And you're gonna keep these kids quiet. And if you don't do that, I'm gonna let Sonny pick one of them little canary birds and do with her what he wants. You understand? Shep. Shep! I know. Just take these kids upstairs. Get ready, sister. <laughs> Remember a couple months ago what the Caleb brothers did to Joey? Yeah. Yeah. Remember that? If it wasn't for me, they would have done the same thing for you. Yeah, and I owe you. I just having fun, that's all. Well, I'll tell you something right now, Sundance. I am in a death defined line of work, you understand? And all I need is obedience. I need people that I can trust to do what I tell them you, to. You can trust me. I just thought you meant. You, you know something? If you fuck up again, I'm gonna have to kill you. I'm not gonna I'm fuck gonna, up. I'm gonna have to kill you. Okay. okay. Great job. Nice timing. <laughs> now, we got one of our people who can drive this thing? You're looking at him. You're kidding. Do you want me to take my time going real slow making this patch? Or... Oh, you can go as fast as you like. But before you go out there, drain out half the water and three quarters of the oil. Do you know how much an engine on one of these things costs? Seventy-five thousand dollars. Now ask me if I care. Sir, she's at the window. I'm going to take the children there. She's found a tunnel that leads to a river, and she's going to take the children there. She's talking to the kids now. I need you to get their attention at the window for five minutes. We'll start when we see you start. We'll go, okay? But hurry. Here, so it must be about there. We have our Zodiac boats on the river? Yes, sir. Okay, can we get somebody to take these plans over there? I can do it, sir. Thank you. Oh, I'm Lenny. Yeah. Lenny, warm up your bulldozer. You're on. Yes, sir. Just one moment. You're not going to let them risk it. Well, I don't think I can stop them. I I'm not sure I would if I could. But they could get killed. They could get killed anyway. Oh, look, Mrs. Stanley, I'm sorry if that sounded callous, but in a situation like this, you have to think of the hostages as already dead. That way, if you save some, we celebrate. Get him. Uppley? Yeah. Got good news, Ted. 
Got him, my chopper. Uh, close. The bulldozer's here. Really gun it. Ted, you have to be reasonable. How can we foresee something like that happening? What the fuck is that? Jack, I'll get back to you. That. That's some kind of engine noise. Hey, Sonny! Checking those kids! second, I swear, I don't know what the hell happened.
Melanie and the big girl Susan. They didn't make it. They got him. Shit. 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 Shots have been fired. A boat is over. It's Stevie, one of the hostages. Chief Stillwell sent me to pick up Detective Foster. Welcome. I'm Lenny Budd, and this is Agent Potter. John Potter. Sharon Foster. I understand you're in a situation with an old friend of mine. Yeah, and the situation's very fluid right now. Just stand by. We're going to need your help. Oh, I get it. What the hell? What is that? Alamp. Yeah, now, you are a bit of a moron, but I want you to try and envision something, okay? This fucking lamp falls over, and the flame goes up them stairs, and the little kids burn like fucking toast. And if the goons were to rush us, all we had to do was stand right here, right? Head, I was. You are standing right here? Yeah. The whole time? Yeah. Turn around. You see me, man? Yeah, I see you. You know some other way to get down here from up there? Answer. No. Well, then you tell me, man. You tell me. How are they going to get down here from up there without you seeing them? I, I don't I mean, Look at them and look at you. They're, you're, they're smaller. Right? Chap, take the girls down, tie them up. Take them downstairs right now, eh? Shut up. Just shut up and listen to me. Okay. Sorry. Now, was you standing there the whole time, Sonny? I had to take a piss. All right, where'd you piss? I went over there. The corner there? How come you didn't piss right here in this corner here? Because I, I, thought, I thought of that, and then I thought, no, I'd probably stink up the fucking place. What? Come on. That's twice today, isn't it? Twice today what? Twice your little dicky here's got you in trouble. Come on. No, no, don't, 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 don't. I have to, uh, come on, I'll do anything. I'm begging you, I'm begging you, I'm begging you. Don't, 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 don't. No, 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 yeah. Oh, fuck! Oh, fuck! Fuck! <laughs>
sir. A couple of our snipers report hearing a gunshot. Outside? Uh, definitely inside, muffled. One single shot? That's right. Melanie? Uh, maybe if he's angry enough to give up even more leverage. You want me to get him? No, no. I'm not going to talk to him anymore. We use Detective Foster. I'm ready, sir. Not now. Now he's got to call us. All right, we make no moves at all, no activity anywhere that he can see, and we initiate no conversations, period. We'll wait him out. Sir, he can wait a long time. So can I. far upstate we just don't see men like that unfortunately we do in pittsburgh this very one in fact how the hell did you get him to surrender i don't know i just kept him on the phone long enough i guess <laughs> no concessions rewards i promised i'd fuck him that one i haven't tried They did escape from a federal institution. However, the murders were committed by a decided. Marks. Thank God. I'm starting to think you do. No, no. No, don't worry about that. I'm staying close. That's true. Yeah. not Mr. Potter, Ted. It's Sharon Foster. Remember me? Yeah. Yeah, of course I do, darling. You still owe me a piece of ass. What are you doing here? Well, I'm just passing by. Heard you were up to your old tricks. Not me. I was just, you know, up all night and twiddling my thumbs and biding my time and... So, what's shaking? Well, I'm still with the PD. Got promoted. I'm a detective second now. No shit. Yeah, I'm doing something with my life. What the fuck are you doing with yours? Well, I'm very proud of my accomplishments, actually. Well, you ought to be, because you're a grade-A fuck-up. <laughs> Listen to you, girl. You've been hanging around too many cops, I'd say, huh? Let's talk, Ted. Sure, I'll talk. Make it quick. Gotta make a deal with Potter for that chopper. Aw, oh, gee, Ted. I wouldn't make any book on that if I were you. 
Ma's out. You have no chips left. Well, for one thing, you're missing six hostages. Or didn't you notice? Oh, yeah, I know that. But I still got the two ladies over there sleeping tied up. Who cares? Yeah, but it's not the same. You see, when you had the kids, you had real juice. But now, with a couple of grown women, I don't know, Ted. What I'm trying to say is, if things heat up, they could get expendable real quick. Fuck off. Let me talk to Potter right now. He's not here, Ted. Well, just go and fucking find him, then. If I don't get that chopper here in ten minutes, I'm gonna shoot myself a couple ladies dead. Oh, that's fucking brilliant. You must have thought that one through, didn't you? Yeah, you dumb fucking asshole. If you kill those ladies, these guys will lay a shitstorm on you so fucking fast you're not gonna know what hit you. And you better face it, man, even if you got the chopper. They'll catch you and drag your ass back here and stick a needle in your vein. Now, how does that sound? That's something to look forward to, isn't it, baby? Yeah. Well, I don't want no needle. That never has to happen, Ted. My ass. Now, you listen to me. I'm telling you the truth. You make a deal now or you'll die today. Now, hold on a second. Now what? Who can guarantee the state won't seek the death penalty? Let's suppose Mark's good. Yeah, where is he? Mm -hmm. well, he's outside. He spent the night in the media tent after having his picture taken all the kids. Yeah, that figures. Get him in here. Right. Ted, I think we may be able to work something out here. Listen, baby. You know, while they're checking out, you just come in here and sit on my dick. Well, I would, Dad. You know I would. But I don't know where it's been. My dick? It's been in my pants for an awful long time, unfortunately. Why don't you just keep there just a little while longer? He's going to surrender? I think we can get him to, if you'll put it on paper. Of course I will. Ted, I have the state assistant attorney general here. He's guaranteeing they won't seek the death penalty if you surrender. Now, do we have a deal? No, we don't got a deal. I want to see it all writ out first. You will. We're going to send it to you right now. And, Ted, you're doing the right thing. Yeah. Ted? Hang on. You know? So what do you think, Ted? Well, it's it's fine. I don't see no mention of my man, Chet Wilcox. He's a part of this. Absolutely. Same deal. Bonner, too. Oh, you can forget about him. He's not going to be needing no paper. Why is that? Oh, poor little fella went and had himself an accident. That little redhead we got in here, she went and bit his dick off. <laughs> uh, Mr. Potter just walked in. He wants to talk to you. Hey, Ted, I just heard the news. You're doing the right thing. Save the bullshit, will you, Jack? What's the game plan now? Well, just a few ground rules. Uh, when I tell you, put down your weapons. Step outside with your hands out to your side. Not on your head. Well, it's like Christ on the cross. It's a very nice image, isn't it? How fitting. Listen, here's the deal. I want to see you. I want you up front. I want to know where you are. That's the only way we're coming out. I'll be there. Five minutes. <laughs> Sir, in case we get busy later, I want to say it was a privilege working with you. Likewise. You did a great job with it. It was all you, sir. I just carried the mail. Nevertheless, great job. Thank you. Time's up, Ted. Where are you, Jack? I can't see you. Right here, Ted. Come on out. Now stretch your arms out. Stretch your arms out now. Do it. Okay, Jack, take it easy. You could have a fucking heart attack. Step forward, five feet. On your face. Do it. 
on your face now. All right, man, you're the boss. You're the boss. Hey, Jack. What? Not even you say hi to me? Well, hello, sweet cheeks. I've been waiting for you. How about that fuck now, baby? She looks terrific, huh? The building is clear, sir! Get you home. Captain Bud, this is Kelly at airport security. We found a body in the ladies' room broom closet, sir. Could you get here right away? Hey, uh, Kelly, calm down now. You, you and Harris preserve the crime scene. I'll get down there as quick as I can. Yes, sir. Yes, and both. Thanks. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Watch your step, honey. Hey. <laughs> Wee! Mmm. <sighs> She's a trip. Yeah. Hi. Can I borrow that towel, please? That towel? Yeah. Look, man. It's like your wish has come true, man. Check it out. My wish. Baby, baby, morning, baby. Morning, Take the keys, hands from her. Mm -hmm. I do miss you. I do miss you. Uh, easy, easy. Hands. Listen down there. there. I'm driving. Move over. Get the way over, sweet chicks. Had a girl. Had a girl. Shit. Shit. Ah! She's trapped. body found? It's about 15 minutes ago, sir. Uh, Harris is in there with the body right now. Sit down, son. Put your head between your knees. Thank you, sir. Looks to me like she got her neck broken. Second stage rigor is set in. It's room temperature. She's been dead about 12 hours. Mm. She must have been locked in the broom closet all night long. You didn't touch anything, I hope. No, no. sir. Would y'all give us some room here now? Everybody outside the door until the crime lab gets here. What is it? You look as sick as young Kelly out there. That's a cop, huh? You see that? Right there? You have the same worn spot on your belt. Made by a handcuff case. We've been had, Lenny. Huh? Who knew that Sharon Foster was coming into this airport yesterday? Just our people, the people on the command shack. Well, 
One of them tipped off Andy's girlfriend. Foster was coming. Excuse me, Andy's girlfriend? Yeah. Oh, well, what's her name? Pris Gunder? The one that got away after the bank robbery? Now, only a very close friend of Andy's could get away with pretending to be Sharon Foster. So you're, you're saying that that is the body of the real Sharon Foster? I find that hard to believe. So do I, but look. God, you're right. Oh, Christ. What? Sharon Foster. Damn. Pris Gunder, she wanted to get a ride back to Pittsburgh. She hitched a ride on the perp truck going to Lewisburg. Both officers are down? Yes, sir. One's dead and the other ain't far from it. There was a woman with him. There's a woman down inside, but she works here. No other woman. All right. We'll be there as soon as we take Melanie home. We don't have time, Lenny. We gotta get back to that slaughterhouse where the money is. Well, what's that? The money's in the slaughterhouse. What money? The two million two from the bank robbery in Pittsburgh. That's where they were headed yesterday morning when they hit that Cadillac. But my man chased him in there. No, he didn't, Lenny. He followed them. No sirens. Everyone remains in the staging area until I call them forward. You hear that? Roger. Good. Get on it. You wait here. Lock the doors. You'll be safe in the car. The troopers are on their way. gave you a simple job. The whole thing was laid out for you. You turned it into a goddamn bloodbath. I asked to get caught. Practically did. What the hell were you doing anyway coming here? <laughs> hey, Press! Come on in here and listen to this, honey. You hearing all this shit, Press? Press, I'm telling you, Mark said I screwed up. When have I ever screwed up, honey? Press! Just answer me, baby. Where are you? Well, what are you doing? Hey, Press! Hey, Press! This fucker's gonna shoot me! She's as tired of cleaning up after you as I am. Press, honey! 
Don't move, Marks. Put the gun down. You're gonna let Mark shoot me in cold blood, Press. He said that you were tired of clean up after my shit. Baby, you don't believe that, do you? <laughs> yeah, baby, I do. I do. Truth the told, I do. and I need them. Now you're gonna die. You want to go with me? Please do. I owe you a martini. 